Do you have any idea how long it takes to print three kilograms of plastic into a giant cannon? That and more questions answered this time on Jairus of All. To answer that question, a ridiculously long time. I printed all of the parts to make the outside of the cannon look like the cannon from the game, and it took forever. It would have taken me three weeks if I hadn't figured out a way to speed it up. So I started printing everything in vase mode. But those parts are definitely not strong enough to make into a cannon, so I came up with a great idea. I reinforced them after the fact to speed up the printing time. I fiberglassed the inside of all of these parts, and that made the outer skin of these parts far stronger than they were when it was just a single layer of plastic. But that doesn't make the parts incredibly rigid unless you have complex curves, because that plays off of the tensile strength of the fiberglass. So all of these pieces look like giant weird plastic and foam mushrooms because I filled them with expanding foam to give it structural rigidity so that all of them are stiff and resilient and strong, and it took me a fraction of the time that it would have to, for me to print them entirely the normal way. This is nearly three kilograms of printed plastic. Some of these parts were printed the normal way, and some were printed in vase mode. And with the failed prints, I used up three entire rolls of PLA. But I got my parts done, and it took me about a week to do all of this. Finally, after all that work, I get to put this thing together on the cannon. Make the cannon on the PVC. Gonna do the cannon now. Yep. I overfilled these pieces um, because I wanted to make sure that they actually got filled with foam. And I figured it would be better than doing it and then having to do it again. So I, I went a little overboard. 3D printing's wonderful. You can get really awesome, accurate parts if you know how to build them in CAD, which I'm not very good at doing stuff in CAD, but it takes a long time to print huge parts like this. So finding a way to cut down the print time by doing the infill myself and reinforcing the walls was absolutely necessary. I did the fiberglass and the foam on this piece first as a test because I was concerned that when the epoxy resin, actually it's polyester resin for the fiberglass set up, that it might melt the plastic because PLA does melt at a low temperature, but it's inexpensive, so it was the ideal choice. But fiberglass resin is just like any epoxy. It's a two-part polymer that you mix together and it gets hard, and when that happens, it's an exothermic reaction and it gets warm, so I had to keep it cold in the garage while I was working on it to make sure that it wouldn't warm up enough to melt the part that I was trying to reinforce because that would completely negate the purpose. So I did one and it worked wonderfully, so. I did these three also. Bill Duran from Punish Props says, to make sure your knife stays sharp, so keep a little hone. And this is a diamond sharpener for carbide and steel. And he says that this will allow your blades to keep cutting because foam makes these blades dull very quickly. Let's see if he's right. <laughs> Bill knows his stuff. I'm gonna put everything on the cannon as like a dry run because I haven't done that yet and I need to make sure everything fits. And there's an order to put everything on, so I'm gonna put everything on in that order and make sure it works. And then after I do that, then I'll really put it together once I know that it will work. Is that, yeah. With a project this big, there is no good way to try to put it together, so. Since I have to start from the back, there's the back cap piece put on. That's not on the whole way. I'll, I'll put that on the whole way. But I have to start from the back and move forward. And in order to get all the pieces on without everything rolling all over the place, I have suspended the cannon and all of its parts from a rope on the garage door rails. And I have to go from the back forward. And this is the only piece that fits from the back it actually has a lock built into the print so that it fits on exactly where it's supposed to. Now everything comes on from the front of the barrel. A couple of the pieces on the chamber section are going to be fit via foam that I'm going to install on it so that they are centered. But for right now, they're just gonna sit in place. There's a gap here because this is where the mount ring goes on the rear section of the cannon. This piece is tight. It always was ever since I first printed it, but I call this the chamber to barrel transition spacer. Ah, it's a good fit. Chamber to barrel transition 
counted on there being a little bit of finishing work. They all line up pretty close within a couple of millimeters, but I knew there was gonna be some size differences with the fiberglassing and the foaming and whatnot. First barrel chunk. <clears throat> Second barrel chunk. <clears throat> barrel nozzle. <laughs> This might not seem like a big deal to you, but after staring at pictures and doing conversions and printing all of this out and not test fitting it, I'm super happy about this. I'm two millimeters away from where I thought I was gonna be. I wanted the barrel to sit even with this little conical section. I'm pretty pleased with that for just printing everything out and hoping that all of my measurements were right over this kind of distance. This thing is huge. <laughs> Next thing, I'm gonna get the reinforcement inside of these so that they stay where they're supposed to stay. Harbor Freight floor mats almost reach exactly around my chamber pipe. You know what I just realized? I had it in my head this whole time that I would use contact cement to put this foam onto the cannon. So now it's all stinky in here and I'm gonna run through a bunch of glue. It's all gonna be covered by plastic. I can just put the foam on and tape it in place because it serves no structural purpose. I'll glue these, but these are the last ones I'm gluing. I'm using tape for the rest of it. Stupid. <laughs> Final electrical tape is very stretchy. If I can squish the foam down enough with the electrical tape, then it'll be compressed foam inside of the ring. <laughs> I was afraid of this. Those rings don't go the whole way around, and the area where they're not is collapsing more and it's forcing the ring off to one side just a little bit. But this is supposed to be a flush edge right here. <laughs> Oh, look at that, like a glove. Same process, two more times. I'll see you when those are off. I got these pieces on and it took a really long time. I calculated for quarter inch floor mats and the Harbor Freight floor mats that I used for the foam are not exactly quarter inch and when you wrap them, it changes the dimension. So it took a long time to get it to the right size so I could slide these on. I used tape on this one and then when I put the fiberglass resin on that has MEK in it to glue these in place, that one worked fine. This one, I got the foam just right and put that on and the foam expanded from it and I couldn't get it on the whole way. But it doesn't matter anyway, so I'm gonna use Bondo. Well, Rondo to finish this thing but I'll show you that after I get the rest of these pieces glued on the barrel. Ooh, once it hits that epoxy, it goes on real easy. Perfect. If I'd had more time and more plastic, I would have printed these out like I did these where there was an inner and outer wall that I could fill, but I didn't. So lesson learned. The one thing that I was afraid of when I did the foam, the expanding foam inside these chunks is that it would expand them in certain places and not at other places, which it did on this one. You can see right there, there's a little dip and then on the sides it's sticking out. I wish there was some way to permanently make that tuck in so that it lined up a little better, but I'll just have to smooth it out with Rondo. Come on. <laughs> this one's tight. I located this cut on the barrel specifically where it's at because, well, first of all, it makes it easy because it's halfway and the prints fit on my printer. It also is going to be covered up with the ropes that are on the front of the broadsider. So this transition doesn't actually matter very much. Last piece, moment of truth. <laughs> Bondo, just a little bit of the fiberglass resin. It'll make it way smoother and a lot easier. I've done this before and you can thin it down to the point that you can just paint it on and it works almost like XTC 3D 
which is self-leveling stuff. If you didn't notice, this is different than the rest of them because I put XTC 3D on the, on the nose of the cannon to see how it worked. And a friend of mine gave me that and told me that it was great. Well, it is great, but if you have a part this big, the amount of time that it takes to sand this down is substantial. So not gonna use XTC 3D on this because it's gigantic and it would take me a really long time to sand it back. This on the other hand is a four minute work time and then it fully cures in 30 minutes. So it makes doing a project that's this big a hundred times faster. So one of the major reasons that I'm using this thinned out is because the plastic is a little bit flexible. This stuff is a consistency that's meant to be spread onto the metal of a car. I'm taking my time trying to get this really nice because if you get a really nice layer before you start sanding, it cuts your sanding time down substantially. And the surface doesn't have to be perfect anyway, which I have to keep telling myself because it's a post-apocalyptic weapon from the nuclear wasteland that is Fallout, so. It sets up real quick and now it's turning to Play-Doh. So it's not really spreadable anymore. This is a game of layers. So it doesn't really matter. Because the first layer is sanded, now it's time to fill the little problems. Because this stuff steps up fast, I like to mark out where I'm gonna fix before I mix it up and start doing it. That way I don't have to find the problem areas when I've got a batch mixed up and it's getting hard on me. <laughs> now that this has been sanded smooth and I have four layers of Fondo on it, it's time to put a little bit of primer on it because when I put the primer on it, I'll be able to see where the messed up areas are and I can fix it with spot putty. Unfortunately, I am out of all of the cans of primer that I thought that I had. There were a couple, but they had a tiny bit left, so I can't finish painting this. But you can see where the color on this is consistent. Now you can easily see the parts that I still need to fix. You can clearly see right here, now that the color is constant, that needs fixed. That's supposed to be perfectly smooth and flat. And the same thing with that part right there. Those parts were really hard to tell if they were messed up or not before the primer was on, but now it's perfectly obvious. I have to stop now because I have to go get primer because I have to sand this and get the surface finished before I can move on to other stuff. So that means I have to quit. Tomorrow, we'll get back to it, we'll get back to it, back to it. At that point, I was extremely frustrated that I didn't have primer, so I decided to paint the whole cannon with a coat of silver. Metallic paint dries really fast, and I knew I could sand it off easy. And I realized that it didn't look right, because in the game, the cannon has grooves all over it like it was a big machine piece of metal. And I came up with a great idea to do that, and save my arms from having to sand down this entire cannon to try to make it look perfect. But it was contingent upon me being able to spin the cannon. So I had to make a rig to turn the cannon into a rotisserie or like a lathe. So I came up with an idea to cut out circles that are the size of the barrel of the cannon and the rear of the cannon. I used my circle cutter to cut them out exactly to the right size so I could pressure fit them in. And then I cut a seven eighths hole in the center of them, which happens to be close enough to 22 millimeters that I could fit in 608 bearings, which are cheap skate bearings. And those have an inner diameter in the bearing, which happens to be big enough to hang on the rope. So after I got all that put together, then I could spin the cannon. And then I could do my idea, which is to cover the cannon with a layer of fiberglass epoxy. And while I was spinning it, I could use the butt of the brush to make grooves in the epoxy so that it looks just like it did on the game and I don't have to sand it anymore. You might be wondering how I painted the end cap of the cannon because the rope is in the way and it's not on the cannon. This is a pottery wheel for kids, but the motor wasn't powerful enough to do anything. So I replaced it with the guts from a tool and I just stuck it on here and did the same thing that I did with the cannon and painted it the same way too. And so it'll just look like it was on part of the cannon when I did the stuff on the cannon. 
The fiberglass epoxy that I used was taking a really long time to set up, so during the time while that was setting up, I decided I'd make the wood block for the front of the cannon because it's a really odd size according to my ratios. So I glued together four chunks of 2x4 that were oversized to be able to give me my 3x5x9 or 10 or whatever it was, and then I trimmed that all down on the table saw to get it to this size. I also painted and weathered the flintlock, which is just an aesthetic piece, so it doesn't really matter that much. After I finished that, I was able to put the King George III cipher on it that's on the cannon in the game. I had 3D printed this at three and a half millimeters, but it needed heated to be curved to the shape of the cannon. I used aluminum foil and a rag that was dunked in ice water to cool it quickly so that it wouldn't heat the epoxy up and stick when I put it onto the cannon to give it its shape. And then I peeled that off made sure it was aligned by marking out where it should sit on the cannon, and then I glued it in place with a bunch of super glue. Then I needed to blend it into the cannon because in these cannons in real life, it's cast into the cannon, the cipher is, and it looks like that in the game also. So I used 3DX Tech Epoxy, which is good in this situation because it's a small area, but the problem with it is you can't see it. It's clear, so it's hard to tell what you've covered which is good if you want the color of your plastic to show through, but I didn't care about that. So I mixed some pigment in with it, and then I blended everything together and tried to make it look like that cipher was part of the cannon. That took a really long time. The epoxy has to sit for at least two hours before you can use universal bonding primer. This paint is the only paint that I have found that says that it's made to be used on two-part epoxies, which are notoriously hard to adhere to. So a nice light coat of that acts as an adhesion promoter for the next coat of paint, which is gloss black, which is necessary to put the silver paint on to make it look better because I really want this cannon to look like it's actually made of metal. I had to let it dry for a very long time to make sure that I didn't mess up three layers of paint when I started doing the weathering process. Now that this thing is all pretty and it looks like it's actually made out of metal, it's time to make it look like it's made out of old metal. There's a million videos out there on YouTube about how to weather stuff. I'm just gonna use acrylic paints watered down with water to try to make this thing look old. It's trial and error and you can fix any mistake you make and mistakes sometimes end up making it look better. This is water, it's not mustard. <laughs> Mixture of black and brown for dirt. The initial pass is gonna be just this dirty looking stuff. I'll make it look like there's dirt on it. And then I'll move on to other things that would be wrong with this, like corrosion and other stuff. <laughs> look at how much more depth that has instantly. Even if this happens to get too dry, I can always just add water to the rag when I'm wiping it off if I get too much of this on there. Wiping this way is more likely to take the paint out of the grooves, but it also makes it look better because that's the way the dirt and the corrosion would go because it would, you know, stuff would drip down around the cannon like this. It wouldn't go that way. So. I need to try to keep my wipe marks going around circular with the grain. It's already starting to look a lot better. In the broadsider in the game, there are definitely shiny spots where you can tell that this thing is made out of steel, not brass, because it's silver, which is why I painted it silver underneath. And the reason I painted it with spray paint and I'm using water-based paint now is so that I can really make it look like metal. So letting this dry for a long time allows me to do this. Now that looks nice and weathered and it's a mix of brown and black. And when it dries, it'll look like it's rusty right there. But this cannon is being used so that section wouldn't be completely covered in rust. It would have bright spots of metal where it gets bumped and the rust gets knocked off. You can smooth it out by using a furry rag and make it look a little more realistic so that the stippling isn't quite so obvious. But the real trick is taking a not fuzzy rag and using it to remove the stuff from the high spots. And I can rub on this pretty hard to highlight where the steel would be showing through, even on areas that I've already done as long as the rag is slightly damp. When I polish out my dirt, it makes it look far more like metal underneath. If I want that to look a little more like metal, if I rub it lightly, I get the highlights from the high ridges and it makes it look like the metal's 
showing through all of the dirt and grime. These little things that make it look very realistic. It takes a little more time, but the result is totally worth it. First pass of weathering is complete. Time to switch to other colors. A little bit of foliage green. It'll give it more depth if I do use some colors to do some of this weathering. So I'm using the green, but I have a little bit of black and a little bit of brown in there too. So these areas that are raised that would catch water, they would be far more beat up and nasty and rusty than the rest of it. So those are the types of areas where I'm gonna hit with more colors. Try to make this thing look like it's actually been out in the wasteland. I do want more green around this area because these uh, flintlock cannons had brass bases on their flintlocks or brass or bronze, I don't know, it's gold colored metal, but when it corrodes, it's green. So there would be more green around this area where the flintlock needs to go. When you build models, people say to paint with light. So you can paint with light and do your highlights, but you also need to think about where the crud would go. So you paint with dirt, which is what I'm doing now. Tiny bit of light blue, of course, mixed with brown and black and green. I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it might be time to move on. I mean, I, I haven't played with cannons a whole lot, so I don't know what a real cannon looks like that well, but I think it looks good. It looks similar to the game, and it looks like it's actually made out of metal. That's what I was going for, so. Ta-da! I didn't have to have the cannon completely finished to get to this point, but it made more sense to do it that way because that way I didn't have to take it on and off of my rig over and over, because now, I need to figure out how much to take out of this block, which would have been very difficult to do with just measurements. But now that I have it set up with my frame, I can do that and get the cannon level. So right now it's slightly angled up. So that's the angle of the cannon, but it needs to come down to there, which means I need to cut a recess out of this block, just like it is in the model in the game. And I'm just gonna wing it and grind away wood until it's at the right place. I think it's about a half an inch, but that's a conical section. So it has to drop more in the back into the piece of the wood than it does in the front in the piece of wood. So it's gonna be a very complex shape that I have to dish out. So I'm just gonna use the angle grinder and sand wood away until it fits the way it's supposed to. Almost there. I don't think that's low enough. I need to take more off of it. That is pretty close. Does that look straight? I'm gonna go with that right there. It might be a little high in the front, but if there's a tiny amount of sag in the front piece of the frame because there's moving parts in it, it won't matter. So I'm gonna leave it where it is and go from there. Time to cut metal. So the way I've got it set up, it's an inch and a half off because there's an inch and a half drop, but this doesn't drop an inch and a half because this is cannon at an angle and then it bends after it comes out of here. So I need to bend this until that touches down on the table. Then I have my drop and I have my angle for the rails that come forward, which is why this front part of the frame is so complicated. That's pretty good. Yes, I think I'm bending a little too much. Yep, I'm gonna call that good. That isn't going anywhere. <laughs> so far, so good. Now I need more props so that I'm not welding directly on my Patreon's names. Patreon, patrons, my patrons' names. That's shameless Patreon plug. If you're one of my patrons or you become one of my patrons, you'll get all of the 3D files that I use to print this Canon and the Fusion 360 file that I built to make the Canon, the digital Canon. And it's only a dollar a month and you get your name on the table and you get access to extra content. So you can be one of my patrons if you want, if you follow the Patreon link in the description. I'm putting a lot of faith in my table being flat at this point. It's gonna be a lot of eyeballing and lining up to make sure that this is where it's supposed to be. Yes. 
support bracket. Here we go, frame chunk number one. This tube fits pretty well inside of this square stuff, but I'm gonna leave it so that it can slide the whole way out. That way I can take it out and fit this thing later. But for right now, I need it to gauge my distance and keep these two parts lined up because I'm gonna have two inches of travel. That's six, that's four, overall 12. See what I'm saying? What I calculated is that with this kicked out, the inner part of the front rail is going to be the same width as the outer part of the bottom of the rear rail. And that is also the width of the block. Now the part that's making me afraid that I did something wrong in working out these distances is that in the game, this tucks back in. So I kicked it out an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter. And then that should be the same size as that for the inside. But if I'm not right, I guess I just have to cut it apart and re-weld it. So I might as well just go for it. Almost there. I got that frame part finished. Now it's the moment of truth to see if it's actually the right size and it worked out the way it was supposed to. And I finished the other one too. Now I need to set these to the right length and I went back and I checked my measurements and they're supposed to have an inch and a half of travel. I believe earlier I said two inches, which was wrong. It's an inch and a half. So if I set these to an inch and a half, hopefully the block should fit between them, which it does, and they line up, it slides. Now the real difficult part is if everything else fits according to the measurements that I used when I did all the conversions and the ratios to make the cannon a certain size based on the shocks and the frame, everything has to work together and everything has to be made separate. So now's the real test. First one is if this lines up <laughs> and it does perfectly on that mount plate when I have an inch and a half of travel. The really big question is, does the cannon line up with everything the way it's supposed to? I'm actually kind of worried about this. This part of the cannon doesn't have anything covered on it because I'm using the wooden mount rings to actually mount to the chamber inside the cannon. It's gonna be three layers, so two will be on the foam, one will actually be on the PVC. According to the game, that wooden mount ring sits right about there. It's almost to this piece of frame. And then these shocks, mount here on the frame and then this part is going to get mounted inside that ring and that lines up there and this sticks out the back to match the one in the game also see how that sticks out a little bit and then the wooden mount ring is right next to that rail so i'm good now does this line up and it's a little bit further forward than i thought this is further forward so it's not entirely perfect but maybe if i move this the wood ring will still clear that frame and this can stick out the back less and it lines up. Everything works out. All these things were built separate, but they all work together. It might be luck or maybe it's all the ridiculous amount of work that I did making all the conversions and doing all the measurements to make sure everything lined up the way it's supposed to. But I have a lot left to do. I have to drill a long hole through this block and matching holes in these so that I can run a bolt through it to mount the shocks and the block and everything. But I also have to split that block in half, then drill the holes for the ropes that go around the cannon, and then cut and mount all those ropes and epoxy them in place. And then I need to glue the block back together, and then I can mount the front shocks in that part. But then I need to make the brackets for the rear shocks. And once I make those brackets, then I can mount the rear shocks, but I have to make the wood rings. Then I need to make the wooden rings to mount the rear shocks. And once I make those, I need to split those and clearance them for the hinges and the clasp that go on them for them to be able to attach to the cannon. Then I have to stain all the wood, then I can mount the rear shocks and install the rings with them. Then I need to make the handle, put that on, install the switches on that, connect all of that to the taser parts that I then need to mount to the cannon. Then I can set up the ignition system inside the chamber and possibly mount a chamber fan so I get a stoichiometric explosion. Then I need to turn tennis balls into cannonballs by painting them with stuff that's special, and I'll show you that. But right now, I need to weather the frame, which is the exact same process that I did when I weathered the cannon, just with different colors. So with all this work to do, right now is a good stopping point for this video, but make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you want to catch the next one. That'll be out next Sunday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.